Welcome to the latest installment of the 30-Minute Workout Series. This is Jeff Bartles. I am joined today by my colleagues, Angel Espinosa, Stacey Morikin, Lou Holland, and Matt Wunsch, and Fernando Lima. They're going to be hanging around in the background doing the Q&A. This is part one of a four-part series. We're going to be looking at how we can get started using BIM Collaborate Pro to manage our civil projects in the cloud. During today's session, we're just going to be looking at how we can initiate that civil 3D project. During the course of these four sessions, our goal is to provide enough demonstration and enough training to help you get started using the platform. We hope that by doing this, it can help with any pilots that you have, or if you're currently using the solution, we would show you some tips and tricks and best practices. We're going to be taking a step-by-step -step approach to the material, focusing on the how and why. So no bullet points, no screenshots, no theory. We're going to be doing things live in front of you. Along the way, we will be also including some practical examples so you can see how to take advantage of Autodesk's cloud platform. We do have some ground rules for the sessions. Some of the examples that we show may be abstract in nature, and we do that on purpose. This way we can focus solely on how a tool works. Once you understand how the tool works, you can apply it in whatever situation works best for you. We also value your time, so we are committed to starting and ending on time. These sessions, as Leah mentioned, are recorded. Anybody that has registered for the session will get access to a recording. And then, as always, please, if you have questions, put those in the Q&A pane. That is the most efficient way for our folks in the background to find and respond to those questions. So the agenda for today, I've got a ton of things I want to talk about. We are going to start out by doing a quick overview of Autodesk's cloud platform. We'll look at the major players, how the pieces fit together. We will then learn how to create a project in the cloud for civil 3D use. Along the way, we will tour the platform interface. We'll look at how we can upload and view content. We'll also look at, as that content grows in the cloud, how we can filter and find files and projects. And then at the end of today's session, I'll leave you with some additional resources if you'd like more information about the topics that we covered today so that you could review that before our next session. As always, this is going to be a PowerPoint-free zone. We will be working live in the application for the duration of our time together today, at least as much as we can. First, let's talk about Autodesk Cloud Platform. The platform is made up of products, otherwise known as modules. You can see several of them here. This is not all of the products. It's the big ticket items. The primary module is this one at the center called Autodesk Docs. This represents the file store for the platform. This is where you create your project folders. This is where you develop your directory structures, upload and save files. This is where you invite members and assign permissions and do design review activities. It is the, uh, the foundation of the platform. There are additional modules available. These modules represent tools and functionality that you may require depending on the workflows that you're doing. There is a module called Design Collaboration. This module allows us to host our live Civil 3D files in the cloud. Also works with Revit, also works with Plant 3D. By having access to this module, it kind of elevates docs from being just a file store to having the ability to work on those live models. There is another module called Model Coordination. This one comes into play if you have multiple teams as part of a single project. Having access to this module means that each team can have its own dedicated team space where they can work collaboratively amongst themselves and then they can share their work with the other teams at such time as they deem it's ready. The work that's shared between teams can be aggregated together into a single BIM model for the purpose of doing things like clash detection or constructability review. If you have heard the term ABC Pro or BIM Collaborate Pro, that is the name given to these three modules. Over the course of the next four sessions and sessions that we have planned coming out in the future, we will be focusing on the features and functionality found in these three modules. Okay. Having said that, let me drop out of this, and I'm going to start by logging into the cloud platform. Here through my web browser, I'm going to type acc.autodesk.com. And when I get in, it takes me to the welcome screen. If we look in the upper left corner, you can see it says account admin. I happen to be an account admin for this account. You can have as many account admins as you like. A little later in the sessions, we'll look at how we can generate more account admins if necessary. Here on the welcome screen, I can see a list of the projects that I have access to. And what I'd like to do is create a new project. To create a new project, I will click the Create Project button. This brings up the Create Project card, and you can see there are several entries here. Pay note to the items that have the red asterisk. These are the things that you have to fill out. The other items represent metadata. You can fill it out now if you want to, or you can always come back later and make changes. For my project name, I'm going to call this. Wesley Road Extension. Project number, let's click in here and I'll just do a fictitious number here, 555-1212. Five, 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 one, two, one, two. 
Next, I can choose the account. In what account would I like to save this project? Now, if you're just getting started with the platform, when you open this up, you will probably just see your account. When I open this up, you can see that I have access to several accounts. I happen to be an administrator on several, so I can, I can choose from these. I'm, I'm just going to select my personal account, JWB Engineering ACC. Project type. I'm going to click here, and we can select from one of these pre-built projects from this list. I'm going to drag down. It's kind of nice. The header stays at the top of the screen. I'm going to drag down to infrastructure since this is a roadway job and I'll choose streets, roads, highways. Let's come down to template. Template is where we can select a predefined directory structure for our project. If you're using Civil 3D, I'm sure you have some type of pre-built directory that you use to generate all your new Civil 3D projects from. We do the exact same thing here in the cloud. I'm not going to select a template just yet because I'd like to show you how we can build those directories, assign permissions, assign members, things like that from scratch. Once you understand how that works, you can then use what we've learned there to create a template. And we'll look at templates in a future session. That'll be a topic for another day. For right now, I'm going to keep the rest of these items as the defaults, and I will come down and choose Create Project. When we create the project, it takes us right into the project. I can see the project name here at the top of the screen. And it takes me right into the members area. And currently we can see that I am the only member of this project. I also happen to be selected. So you can see my properties over here to the right. The properties that we have associated with each member can be changed. Let's talk about some of these. First thing is my company. Currently that's Autodesk, which is perfect for me. If I click to open this menu, you can see that I can select from other companies as well. These happen to be companies that I'm using on other projects that I'm working on. So you know, but the first time you jump in here, you may not see company information. If you'd like to create a company, we can do it from here. If I type uh, Smith, for instance, it's saying, hey, we don't recognize that in the directory, but you can add that company right now if you want to. So I'm going to stick with Autodesk. We'll come down to Role. If I open this up, well, usually I get a, a list of roles that I can choose from. Fortunately, we'll be talking about roles in the next session. We can use this to assign permissions for our folders. We can choose a role of like BIM manager or engineer or surveyor or something like that. By assigning roles to people, we can assign those roles to permissions to folders. And then if I assign somebody a role, they automatically have access to all the appropriate folders. So we'll be talking about roles in a future session. I'm going to leave that at the default here for right now. Access level. Since I'm the administrator on this project, I have project administrator rights. I could also bump myself down to project member if I want to. The most important thing you can do when adding yourself to a project is turning on access to the products. Remember, we talked about products just a little bit ago. I'm going to turn this warning off because I'm going to take care of that right now. I would like to activate the docs product, design collaboration, and model coordination. The items that you see here will be based on what you purchased. So you may see more or fewer items in your interface than I'm seeing here. In fact, if we look down a little bit lower, you can see that I've got an unpurchased product here called Auto Specs. So I'm going to activate those products for myself. Let me close this up. I can always assign additional products later. If I want to, we can come back and do that at any point. I'm going to come up to the product picker here at the top left of the screen, and I'll choose Docs to go to the file store. Now, when you do, this is the first time I've clicked Docs. If you remember, I just activated it less than 10 seconds ago. So the first time I try and access it, it's going to bump me out to the overall files list so it can complete that activity. We can see my project here at the top of the screen. I'm going to click here to go into the project. And when I click to go in, it's taking me to that docs module or that docs product. We can see the features and tools available in docs. Currently files is selected. Once again, at the top of the screen, we can see the name of the project. When you create a project by default, you will have a folder called project files. From here, you can start building out your directory structure. I'd like to add some additional subfolders here. I'm going to click the ellipsis button and I'll choose add subfolder and I will call this photos. And then I can click the check to close that. I'll go back and click the ellipsis button and choose add folder and we'll call this one documents. And you don't have to click the check. You can press enter to finalize that. Likewise, you don't have to click the ellipsis button. If you right click on a folder, you get access to that same menu. I'll choose add subfolder and I will call this plan sheets and I'll press enter. Note that if I wanted to, I could right click on a folder and I could create folders within folders. So very similar to how you create folders on your local server or hard drive, we do it very similar here in the cloud. When I select a folder, I can see the contents of that folder over here to the right. 
And uh, currently this folder is empty. If I want to upload content to my cloud platform, I can do that by clicking the upload button, or I could simply drag and drop files into this view. I am going to bring up my Windows Explorer here for a second. I have a collection of PDFs that represent, we'll say, a current set of plan sheets for this project. I'm going to drag and drop those into the interface, and you can see how those files are uploading in parallel. Now, I don't have to watch this process. I can click Done, which will kind of minimize it here over to the side of the screen. While this is cooking, I'm going to upload some additional files. Let's go to the Photos folder, and I'll bring up my Windows Explorer, and I've got some sample JPEG images here. We'll drag these in, and I'll click Done, and then we'll go to Documents. And I happen to have a single Word document. This happens to be the agenda that I'm using for today's session. We'll drag this in as an example. And I'll click Done. And then I can close this upload window as well. Once again, as you click the folders, you can see the contents of those folders over here to the right. So it's navigating your project is a lot like navigating a web page. One more thing from an IT perspective. This is a service that you connect to. There's no installation, hotfixes, or rollouts or anything like that. Deployments, this is a service that we connect to. It's managed on Autodesk's end, so very easy to get started with. When we access a folder, I can open the files within that folder just by clicking. They act like hyperlinks. This platform has the capability of opening more than 100 industry standard files that you may use with a project. Things like DWGs, PDF, DGN, Navisworks, Revit, Microsoft Office files, as well as images and video. When we open a file like this, I can hold the mouse wheel down to pan and zoom, much like I can within the AutoCAD environment. This makes it really easy for people involved in this project to be able to review plan sheets or content files, things like that. There are additional tools here. We'll look at these in the future. I can measure things from here. There's also a collection of markup tools, or I can assign work to folks. To close a file, I can click the X. Now, in this case, I've got a whole bunch of plan sheets. If I was reviewing all of these, let's click to open this again. I just want to show you that when you have a plan sheet up on screen, we don't have to close it to go to the next sheet. I can click the next file to jump to the next page. Likewise, I can click this four box and it will show me a thumbnail of all of the sheets. And from here, I can click a sheet to go right to that one if I want to. Let's close this and I will close this. Let's jump back to photos. Once again, we can open up more than 100 different file types. So if I click on JPEG, this represents maybe a photo that was taken out at the site. And let me go to Documents. This happens to be a Microsoft Word document. This is the agenda for today's session. If I select this, if you have access to Microsoft 365, not only can you view these files, but you can also edit them. If I come over and click the Edit button, I now have access to the Microsoft 365 tool set. I can say I can edit this. Let's highlight that, and maybe I'll make that text red. This is auto-saved for me. When I'm done working, whatever I'm going to do here, I can click this menu at the top, and I can come down and choose Autodesk Docs to close this file and return to my files interface. Now, I show you that to show you this. If I go back into Documents here, notice this has a version of 2. The platform will save every version of every file that you edit or upload. It will save every version of every file. If I click on this version number, I can see over to the right, I have access to all of the versions. Now, in this case, I just have two, but as this grows, I'll well, have access to more. Pay note to the ellipsis button on the far right. If I open this, this is how I can make a prior version current. If you want to roll back to a prior version, very easy to do. I also can download the source file or I can create copies of these. Whenever you click on a file, you will always open the latest version, which happens to be version two. If I click this, let me show you in the upper left corner, if I open the menu here, if I wanted to see what a prior version looked like, I could select version one. And now we're seeing this without the edit that I made. It's also as courtesy telling us that this file is not current. So we have access to those versions and we can review prior versions or float them back up to the top if we want to. Now, as we add content to this environment, as the content grows and the folders grow, we may need to search for items. There is a comprehensive search feature here. I'm going to select the Project Files folder, and then I will come over and click in the Search and Filter area. I can then use this palette to find things. I could type in a text string if I want to. Note that I can apply my search to the current folder or all folders. I can include subfolders or content. This content item will search for text within PDF files if we want to do that. For the types, if I open up types here, I can search for folders or files. 
I can search file types. Notice it only shows you the file types that exist within the project, which is kind of nice. I don't have some huge list I've got to navigate through. Maybe I'm looking for JPEGs, for instance. And then there's other items here that you can explore, file status, version, when it was last updated. Let's say I'm looking just for site images. I'm just going to type site here, and I will come down and click search. Before I click that, notice you can also save your searches for future use. Let me choose search, and it will search that entire project, and it's identifying any of the items that conform to my search. Not only can I click to view these files here, but I can also click the path. It will take me right to the folder where that file exists. So if you have to find something, that's a great way to do it. Let's look at the upper left corner. We talked about this just a second ago, the product picker. If I expand this, I can use this menu to flip between the various products. So we're currently using Docs. If I click Design Collaboration, this is where I would have access to the features and functions of that product. Now, it, just, since we're just getting started here, it's like, oh, hey, let's, let's get started. Let's, let's start setting some things up. Don't want to do that yet today, just showing you how this menu works. I can flip to model coordination if I want to. Note down at the bottom, we have a couple of admin options. If you have rights, if you are a project admin or an account admin, you can jump to either one of these items and, and adjust those properties. If you remember, when I created this project, I didn't fill out that entire card. If I wanted to go back and make a change at the project level, for instance, I can click the product admin module. And we were actually here before when I created this project that actually took us into the members area. If you remember, this is where I adjusted my properties. So we were here once already. But if we look down below this module, there is a settings. If I adjust this, here's where I can see all that metadata that I associated with my project. I'm going to choose edit, and here's where I can make a change. I'm going to put an address in for a second. Uh, we'll call this, I'm just putting in a fictitious address here. 555 Barrington, wow, if I could spell it, Barrington Road. We'll just pick one of these. We'll pick this uh, Barrington Street, Horsham, Pennsylvania. Okay, so you can come back and you can edit this information at any point. Let's click Save. Let me show you one more thing. I'm going to open the product picker. Every project includes an insight area. The insight represents the dashboard for your overall project. If you go here, you can see kind of an infographic that represents everything associated with this project. Since I put in an address, I can actually see the location of this project. I can see the weather currently at that site. I can view any project issues associated with this project, maybe ones that are associated with companies or myself. I can view design packages that have been shared. We can also customize this area. There is a comprehensive card library of different reports that we can display on the Insight page here that would allow us to view the metadata for our project. So just wanted to show you that was available. I'm going to go back to Docs here for a second. And let's look at one more thing. We talked about the concept of finding files and content within a project. Let me show you how you can find a project if you want to. Here at the top of the screen, if I open this menu, I can come down and choose View All Projects. This will take me back out to that overall project list. I currently have access to more than 150 projects. If you look here under account, you can see that not all of them are my account. Some of these projects are under others accounts. So these could be projects that I'm tied to for, from another company. Okay. I'm doing work for somebody else. If I want to search for projects, there is a search box over here. Now the project that I worked on last is right there. If we type in, if I start typing in Wesley, you can see that that project floats to the top. Let me clear this. There's also a filter option here. I can search a particular account. So show me all the projects that are on my account. Show me all the projects I'm associated with that are tied to another stakeholder that I'm working with. I'm going to come down and I'll choose my JWB Engineering Construction Cloud. And you can see that gets me down to 35 projects. I can also filter by project type. You can see BIM 360 or Autodesk Construction Cloud. BIM 360 represents our flagship cloud platform. This has been around for several years. Construction Cloud is our newer platform. And the nice thing is, you can access both of them from this environment. In my case, uh, I don't have any projects under BIM 360, so all of them are Construction Cloud. I don't need to sort for that project type. I can also sort by date. In a classical sense, maybe on a server, you've stored projects within a folder called 2023, for instance. Here we can do a similar thing. Maybe I'd like to see all projects from 2022. I can set this to January 1st, 2022 with an end date of January 1st, 2023. And we can see that takes me down to nine projects. 
All right, at the, when I'm done here, I can close this up. Okay, so we've seen how the platform's put together. We've seen how we can access the platform through a web browser, create a project, upload content. We've looked at how we can view the content. We've talked a little bit about versioning. We've also looked at how we can find things, projects and files. Based on what we know now, let me show you a valuable workflow that you could take advantage of using this technology. I am going to start, if you'll indulge me for just a second, I am going to share my tablet. We'll assume maybe I'm out in the field because I can put this content in the cloud. And the nice thing about having this in the cloud is it's available everywhere. I can have it through my web browser or I can have it through a mobile device out in the field. I'm going to share my tablet screen here and then it's going to give me a super secret number to bring this up. There we go. It's not much of a secret because you can see it. Let me type that in and click OK. And then once this connects, there we go. Now I happen to be in this environment here. Let me close it. Let me flip this. There we go. So here's my tablet. So let's say I'm out in the field. If I commit to saving a current set of plans, all my PDFs within the cloud environment, I don't have to carry plan sheets out in the field anymore. Whatever site that I happen to visit, not only will I have access to a set of plans for that site, but I'll have access to any set of plans for any project that I'm associated with. When my tablet comes up, I'm going to tap to open the Autodesk Construction Cloud app. This is a free app that you can access. And then when we come into this environment, we can see down at the bottom of the screen, it's refreshing. I just created a project called Wesley. Click and see if that is available. There we go. Wesley Road Extension. I'm going to tap on that. And I'm going to click download. What this does is it's downloading the structure of the project. It's giving me all the directories, if you will. I'm going to tap this again. And when I go in, I'm going to tap on project files. And in here, you can see plan sheets. So this is my current set of plans. Now I'm going to tap on one of these sheets and I'll click download to pull this down to my device. So in order to view it, it has to be on your tablet. From here, I can just pinch in and out to zoom on this. I can pan around. Notice on the right side of the screen, we have access to those markup tools and issue tools. If we want to use those, we'll talk about those in a future session. I'm going to close the sheet by clicking the X in the upper left corner. And after seeing this, you may be wondering, well, you know, do I have to download all of these individually? First of all, let me say there's probably never a situation where you want the entire project downloaded to a mobile device. So we do have some features here. If I tap the three buttons next to a file, I can choose download a latest version automatically so that they'll be downloaded automatically that particular file. If I come up here and tap on project files, I just want to show you that that same ellipsis button exists next to the folders. So I can click that same button and I can say download latest version automatically. That gave me all of my plan sheets now on my machine. I can carry these out in the field. I don't have to have the roll of plans behind the seat of the truck. And I can use this to review my current set of plans wherever I am. Okay. I'm going to stop my mirroring. And then we are dangerously close to the bottom of the hour. I will, let me jump back to my PowerPoint here for a second. So at this point, we have looked at a lot of things. Basically, you're creating the project, putting some content up there. We have saw how we can view that data through a web browser. But at this point, when it comes to this project, I am a collaborative team of one. It's just me. In our next session, we'll look at how we can control access to this project. We'll learn how to invite members. We'll look at how we can control our access to folders. We'll look at how we can create custom roles, and we'll show some additional collaborative workflows that are made possible using the items that we learn in that session. In the meantime, I want to share with you this additional resource. There is a website called learnacc.autodesk.com. This is a phenomenal tool. It includes free recorded tutorials that will show you how you can get up and running using this tool. Just as an example, I'm going to click on this. And when we go here, what you'll do is come down under courses and click view courses. And from here, you can select the courses that you're interested in. So courses on administration, courses on docs, you can see information here for BIM Collaborate Pro. So until we get back together again, this can be a great way to get more information about the topics that we talked about today. Okay. As we mentioned earlier, when it comes to questions, if any questions have gone unanswered at this point, provided we have your permission, we will get back to you with an answer. On behalf of the team, I want to say thank you so much for attending. We hope you found value in this content, and we look forward to seeing you guys again at our next 30-minute workout.